Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Java Algorithms and Data Structures tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover part 2 of my coverage of hash tables. If you didn't watch part 1, definitely watch it. Otherwise, you'll be confused because I use a lot of code from that tutorial in this tutorial. And I also provide a link to the entire Java Algorithms playlist above. So what are we going to cover in this tutorial? Well, we're going to cover why we should use primes when constructing our hash tables. I'm going to cover how to increase hash table size, even though I said that should be avoided in the last tutorial. I'm going to show you what is and how to avoid clustering, how double hashing works, and how to find values in a double hashed hash table. So I have a lot to cover, so let's get into it. So why should we use primes? Well, previously, to calculate what index we are going to put our values in, we just arbitrarily used the value that was stored and that we wanted to put in our hash table and got the modulus using an arbitrary array size. You're going to see in this tutorial why it is better for the array size to be a prime number. The main thing we want to do is try to avoid collisions. And a collision occurs whenever we try to put an item in an index in our hash table that already has an item inside of it. And collisions mainly occur when we are trying to store similar data. And in fact, if we have n values that we are trying to store in our hash table that are similar, this is going to cause n times as many collisions. So instead, we're going to use a prime number for the array size to help minimize collisions. So let's take a look at that code. So here is code from the previous tutorial, and I'm going to, on purpose, try to cause collisions. Remember, our array size is 30, and I'm going to put multiples of 30 inside of this data here that I'm going to try to stick in a hash table. And I'm just using the previous code that we had before, and I'm just going to go the func, and then go into this guy and go hash function two, and then strings for array. I'm gonna stick elements to add three inside of there, and then the array can be exactly the same as it was before. And then here we're gonna go the func.array and execute it. And you can see it went and built this gigantic array. Now we're using bigger arrays in this tutorial. But you can see here, it is trying to put the item 30 in index zero. Then it's trying to put the item 60 in index zero as well. And you can see immediately we have a collision. And very often, whenever we're just using random data, it is amazing how often we get into a situation like this, where we just have one collision after another. Because very often, things in the real world follow patterns and those patterns that are followed are normally not prime. So now let's look at what would happen if we just simply changed the array size to 31 which is a prime number and execute. Now we're gonna see all of these guys automatically just go right into the right place without near a collision until we get way way down here near the end of the point where we'll be putting values inside of our hash table. And this is even whenever we are using an array that is only 31 spaces in size and we're trying to put 30 data items inside of it. So you can see right there immediately just how good of an idea it is to use prime numbers. So that brings us to how are we going to be able to increase our hash table size? Because we find ourselves in a situation where we want to put 30 items into a 30 item hash table. We'd like to increase that to 60. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Basically what we're going to need to do is find a prime sized array that is going to be bigger than the array size that is requested based off of what I just covered. Then I'm going to store the values in the current array and then eliminate any empty spaces because we now have a different array size which means that the calculation, this guy right here, which defines in what index each element is going to go into, well, if array size changed, that means this calculation needs to be done again. That's the reason why we want to get rid of all the empty spaces. Then we want to increase the size of our current array and then use a hash function to fill the newly sized array with the original values. So let's take a look at that code. All right, so we're back inside of here again, and we're just basically going to do all the things that I just talked about. And all the code in this video is available in the link underneath the video. So one thing that I'm definitely going to want to check is whether a number is prime. So I'm just actually going to come in here and create myself a function or an algorithm that is going to tell me that. So it's going to receive a number, have it set as is prime. And then the first thing I want to do is eliminate the need to check for even numbers. So that's going to be very easy and that's going to immediately cut out half of all the numbers that I'm going to have to search for. Just do this, and if that comes up positive, then just do a return false, that that's not a prime number. Then I want to check it against all the odd numbers after two. So I'm going to go for int 
i is equal to 3, i times i, because we're only going to be checking odd numbers, is less than or equal to number, and then I want to increment i by 2. And now after I do that, to check it, I just go if number modulus i is equal to 0. In that situation, I'm going to return false, because I know that this is not a prime number. Otherwise, if we get outside of that for loop, I know that I can return true, that it indeed is a prime number. Well then what I want to do, because remember I'm increasing the size of the array and I want to use this guy up here to define or make sure that I have a prime number array size. So that means I'm going to need to receive a number and then return the next prime that follows that number. And to do that I'm going to go public int and let's say I want to call this get next prime and it is going to receive the minimum number to check which means they're going to send me the minimum array size that is needed and I'm going to give them a prime that is above that. And to do that I'm just going to go int i is equal to minimum number to check and I'm going to cycle through this for as long as it takes to find a prime number and because I made the is prime function this is going to be very easy I'm just going to go is it a prime number meaning i and if it is I'm going to return i. And if not, I'm going to continue to cycle forever until I find a prime number, because I know one's coming eventually. So now let's change that. Remember, our goal here is to increase our array size and get all the old data into the new one. So that means I need to increase my array size to a prime number, of course. And to do that, very simply, increase array size is what I'm going to call this. And it's going to, I'm just going to use min array size here and then I want to come in here and get a prime number that's bigger than the array that is requested array size and I can use my previous functions that I created and pass over minimum array size to get that then after that I want to move the array into a bigger array with the larger prime size and I'm going to do that by creating another function called move old array and pass in new array size into it so I'm trying to keep my methods here as short as humanly possible. So what's that mean? That means I need to create move old array. So let's just keep on going here. Public void move old array int and I'm going to call this new array size. Then I'm going to need to create an array that has all of the values of the array but no empty spaces. So to do that I'm just going to create another string array and let's say I want to call this clean array and I want to remove empty spaces in array and I'm going to create that here in a second and I'm going to pass it whatever the array is currently have it clean everything up for me then I need to increase the size for my array so my array is called the array I'm going to say new now that I have a copy of everything that's in the array new array size I can change the array size for the array that I'm using here and then of course I'm gonna to have to say the array size and also have it set for new array size if you can't remember this is all the stuff that I'm changing right here so that's what I'm changing scroll back down well then I want to fill my array with negative one so I just go fill array with neg one just like that and I actually created this guy ahead of time that's just down here it's very very simple See, fill array with negative one, and it's just going to take the array and stick negative one in every single one of the spaces. That's all that's doing. So come back up here. Then I want to send the values previously in the array into the, my new larger array. And I'm just going to use my hash function to, just like I used before, pass into it clean array, which is going to hold all the values that the array previously had. And the array is going to be the guy that's going to get all those new values hashed in. So that means I need to create this method right here, remove empty spaces in array. So really simple, public string, it's going to return a string array, remove spaces in array, and it's going to get a string array passed into it, array to clean is what I'm gonna name this guy. And then what I'm gonna do is create an array list. It's gonna hold strings, and I'm just gonna call this string list. It's just gonna be a temporary holding cell is equal to new array list, which is a string, array like this. So I'm covering a whole bunch of things I haven't covered before. Import array list so that I have that library. Then what I need to do is cycle through the array and if a space doesn't contain negative one or isn't empty I want to add it to my array list. So I'm just going to go for string and I'm just going to call this the string. This is an enhanced for loop. Array to clean and then inside of it I'm going to go if Remember, I want to find out if it's equal to negative 1 because all the spaces that don't have anything inside of them are going to be equal to negative 1. So I'm going to say equals negative 1 and not equal to, and then I want to go the string, 
and I threw this in here just for the heck of it to delete anything in the array that didn't have anything in it, even though I know that that really shouldn't, you know, happen because I stuck negative ones and everything. And then I'm going to go string list, add the string. So in essence, I'm getting all of the strings that actually have values. And then I'm going to come up here and put array to clean inside of that. And now that I have that all set, I can just go return string list because the string list is going to have all the values that I want. So I just need to return a string array. And to do that, I just go string list to array and then go new string. And then I have to say how big it is, which is just going to go string list size like that. And there you go. And that's going to remove my empty spaces in my array and then pass it back to this guy right here. Now I can go back up inside of main, wherever that is. There we are. And then with this, I can just go the func dot. And if I decide to increase my array size, I can do that to anything really. But let's say I decide to change it to 61, or actually let's change it to 60 just to show that it will change it into a prime. And then we can leave everything exactly the same. So let's try it. And there you can see it automatically went and put a 60 item array inside of this or a hash table, whatever you want to call it. And all the same values are inside of this guy that were previously inside of our other array. So that is how you resize an array or a hash table. Just keep referring to them as arrays because I think they're easier to understand. So now let's get into the next part of our tutorial. The next thing we want to do is try to avoid clustering. Now clustering is going to occur because if there is a collision, we just, based off of what we did in the past, just move to the very, very next index and then put the value inside of that. The only problem with that is, is each time this occurs, it increases the likelihood or the chance that we'll later hit one of those big clusters when we try to put another value in. And that's the reason why you start having arrays where there's literally nothing in one part of the array and then another part of the array where everything's all bunched up. That is bad and that is to be avoided. So let's jump over here and figure out how we are going to eliminate that. And one way to eliminate it, let's scroll down through here. In essence, we're going to use this guy right here. We're just going to change a couple things. So I'm actually going to copy the hash function that we've been using in the past because almost everything's exactly the same. And then I'm going to bounce up here and I'm going to put in my new version that's going to avoid clustering. What we're going to be doing here is what is called creating a double hash hash table. So I'm going to call it double hash function and we're basically going to be staggering it so that it rather than an item going into the immediately next index whenever it hits a other item or a collision occurs what we're going to instead do is randomize the index that we try to insert into so like i said not many things are going to change we're still going to use this for loop we're still going to store the value that we need to put inside of there into ray this guy is also going to stay exactly the same but the one thing that we're going to want to do is change the step or the step distance to get the distance to skip down in the array after a collision occurs to a other random index. And we're going to do this, of course, to avoid creating clusters, just like I said. So I'm just going to go int step distance. And let's say I put seven. Sometimes you might want to put five, but you're going to want to put a prime number inside of there. And I'm going to go parse int. And just like before, go new element value. You want to get the value. And then after this, I'm going to go modulus 7. So it is basically going to move it either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 steps down in other indexes rather than just picking the next index. And of course, put the equal sign in there. And then now we can just come down through here. Let's just copy step distance. This is all going to be exactly the same. The only thing we're going to change here is the array index. And instead of just simply incrementing it, we're going to instead put the step distance inside of there that is going to be random and everything else can stay exactly the same and now we can scroll up inside of here and try this guy out and let's actually put it after this previous guy and here we're just going to go the funk and then we're going to get the double hash function which we just created we're going to use the same exact thing that we had right here and throw it in here instead right like that and then we can display now because the array isn't really really big like it should be you're not going to see much difference, but you're definitely going to see a difference in the amount of clustering. And another thing we're going to want to do here is zero out this array before we try to fill it again. And we're going to do that by calling that method right there. All right, now we can execute it. 
And now you can see if this is the very first array that was created without the double hash, you can see there's a cluster there. There is a massive cluster right there with all this empty space that's up here. And then there's all this empty space here and all this empty space here. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of empty space. And then there's another massive cluster that actually goes over two rows. Now we can see our double hash, and you're going to see that the clusters are smaller. Yeah, there's still some clusters here, and we can help get rid of those by both either increasing the array size or by changing the number from 7 to 5. Some of those different things are work a little bit better, but that is the basic idea behind how we would try to avoid clustering by using a double hashed hash table. And what I mean by coming in here and changing the values from 7 is this guy right here. Like maybe 5 would work better for it. And this is the guy that's going to define our step distance. And we could execute that. And you can see, eh, we still have some clustering going on here. But that's something we want to play with. And that's also a good point that our array should be at the minimum twice whatever the number of values we're going to put in, and that should never be considered the maximum or the ideal array size. So now that we changed that so dramatically, we're going to have to figure out a different way to find values inside of here. And oddly enough, that's not going to change that much either. We're going to get our original find method that we created inside of this guy, and we're just going to change a couple little things inside of here. Not many. And I'm just going to call this find key and let's say double hashed. Everything's going to, for the most part, stay exactly the same, except we're going to need to calculate step distance, of course. So let's just come in here and copy this because we're going to need it. And we're just going to paste that in there so that we'll be able to find the keys that were originally used to calculate step distance. And the only thing that's going to change here is we're going to take this guy right here and come down there and replace it with that, which is the key. This isn't going to change right here. We're still searching for negative 1. This isn't going to change right here. In fact, none of those different things are going to change. The only thing that's going to change is step distance because that is the only thing that needs to change. And we're going to make that change right here. And we're just going to increment it by step distance, right like that. And everything else can stay exactly the same. Scroll back up inside of main. And then to test out this function, just go with the func, and then I'm going to say a double hashed function, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go find key double hashed, right like that. And then I want to put a key inside of there, so let's try 989, which I know is inside of there. Paste it in, save it, and execute. And you can see 989 was found in index 13, and if we scroll up here, you're going to see that 989 indeed was found in index 13. So there is a ton of additional things you can do with hash tables. I'm going to try my best to finish off everything else you can do with hash tables in the next part of the tutorial. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.